Hey, it's Chris from Code the Things coming at you with an update video on the Samsung G9 Super Ultra Wide Monitor. It's been about a month of daily driving and I wanted to give some additional feedback and things I've noticed over time. Have things gotten better? Have things gotten worse? Uh, and answer some of the common questions that I'm finding underneath the original video, which you can find here. So let's dig right in. Okay, so let's talk about one of the lowest hanging fruits here, and that is the heat that was radiating off the screen in my initial review. Uh, well, so one, I do have a computer tower behind the monitor, but that is not the heat outflow. Actually, the air is significantly cooler from my computer tower than what's coming off the screen. It's actually, a lot of the co uh, default color profiles seem to have uh, very high bright not brightness, if not 100% brightness. Uh, so I've created a custom color profile here. Uh, it's actually running at 20% brightness. It is plenty to still game to do my day-to-day -day tasks. If I'm not enjoying some HDR content, I keep it on this color profile and it has reduced the heat, but if you are going to be in a cramped spot, this still might increase the temperature of your room. I still feel it a lot more than I feel it on any of my other monitors or any other monitor I've ever had. So it's still something to keep in mind, but it's a lot more comfortable to sit in front of now. Number two, side by side. So I get a lot of asks, uh, what refresh rate does this support? Um, uh, can I do different adapters, etc.? So the side by side or picture in picture mode, it's easy to toggle on. Uh, it's just simply clicking this box. Right now I think I have it on the default where it's going to split it between half and half. There, there are a couple prefabbed uh, options out there that you can decide how you want this split up. Um, I can do it's just mode type here and then there's things like uh, uh, do I want it two-thirds and one-third do I want it to one-third and two-thirds or do I want a little picture box that I can move around there's no extra custom stretching or anything like that but uh, it, it does the job of a side-by-side now the problem and one of the asks is uh, what about the you know refresh can I do uh, 120 hertz can I do different refresh rates on the different screens the answer is no it is hard locked uh, if I bring that back up it is hard locked at 60 hertz no matter the inputs you use so you can select a mix match of display port and HDMI or both display port uh, but it actually totally grays out any of my uh, settings here so that's unique because not only does it lock my refresh at 60 uh, it disables or it turns keeps low input lag on but I have no custom settings on adaptive sync um, resp uh, response times anymore I can't change black equalizer I can't even change my color profiles I am locked at just setting brightness up or down so that is kind of weird I would think I could still set this as like a dynamic contrast or something like that uh, that is not the case so uh, when you're even thinking like HDR, you are not going to have HDR with a side-by-side -side setup. Okay, so talking of HDR, that really brings me to the, my next point. And in my initial video, I mentioned that HDR seems to really just whitewash the monitor. And I really stand by that comment, especially if you are utilizing Windows native HDR. If you're not looking at true HDR content at that time, it just turns everything whitewashed and kind of like this grayish white hue. So this is with it off. I have my display settings up. Um, all of my zones are being lit up, so I have a, a background that's lighting across all of these. I have just the monitor selected. If I toggle HDR on, uh, it will take a moment for the camera to focus here. And you'll see that it got noticeably grayer. Um, I'm hopefully the camera's picking that up. Even just this black box is now kind of a grayish white uh, look to it. And it's just, it's not enjoyable to use as a monitor in this aspect. Now, with that said, I still use HDR. I will toggle this on manually if I happen to be watching some HDR content. But better yet, if a game truly supports HDR, it should be able to toggle this on and off for you. Um, and I'll show that here. One of the great games uh, that seems to run well, even at the full monitor's aspect ratio, is Doom Eternal. And if I launch Doom Eternal, it's a game that recognizes this is an HDR available screen. Should I turn it on? So I did that in my initial setup and it is very bright. Like that white hurts my eyes. It is bright as can be. 
Um, it did some calibration. I could adjust. Do I want things darker? Do I want things lighter? I left it pretty much stock. I think I maybe uh, increased the brightness a little bit just because I know my monitor could support it. Uh, but you're going to also start seeing some of the weird, like here's the 10 zones, right? So only on the load screens do you get these weird like black areas and gray areas in the background. Once the game actually fully launches, it looks phenomenal. So the, the, the screen, let me go into, I think settings, I can change uh, video, HDR calibration. So I can adjust these, it gives me some dark scenes, some light scenes, I can toggle any of these on how bright I want it to be. But this game runs, again, great at this aspect ratio with HDR, with a 2080 Super. Uh, I think the lowest frames per second I've gotten is 90. I typically get around 110, 120 on this. Um, so it does run pretty smooth. So there are systems that can support full screen gaming. Uh, mine one of them, 3900X, that 2080 Super. Uh, but it also depends on the game type. Like Warzone, I still can't play full screen if I want over 60 FPS with ray tracing on. With ray tracing off, I can just get about 60 FPS. Uh, so next gen, Ampere and Big Navi are going to be big players in being able to take advantage of the screen space. So running around, looks good. You got your guys down there still. Overall, it's an enjoyable experience, and right now, just full-on shooting, you know, I'm 100 FPS. And so speaking of games that run at full screen well, uh, one of the initial comments I made was around Call of Duty not performing well full screen. That's true, I'm running a 2080 Super again, and uh, with ray tracing, I definitely don't get 60 FPS. Without ray tracing, I kind of ride the line of 60 FPS. Not a great gaming experience. But I did find that uh, Call of Duty and several other games support aspect ratio changes. So not just resolution, but aspect ratio changes, which will allow me to run 2560 by 1440, and then the games run great. Obviously, it's not using the full screen, but something like Ampere or Big Navi is going to be required to do that uh, in a fun or smooth way. Uh, the, I did find a, a popular game, Fortnite, does not support aspect ratio, at least anywhere in the native UI, and therefore it is full screen at all times. It still runs fairly well. It's not the most performant game. Uh, I did keep it on high I, settings, I believe, and I was still getting around like a 60 to 70 FPS, but it, it's kind of disappointing I couldn't reduce the aspect ratio if needed. Now here's one thing I didn't bring up on my initial video, and it's really starting to bug me, is the stock monitor stand has a decent amount of wiggle on it. Uh, if you someone bumps your desk, it wiggles a lot more than any other monitor would. Um, it's super easy to move. It's kind of weird because if you use anything like the button, it just shakes and it shakes for a while uh, with even really minor like footsteps kind of nearby. So if you're in an office space that kind of already vibrates when people walk by, this is not gonna be for you just because it is gonna get really annoying. And lastly, I think there might be some firmware issues still with this monitor. Initially, when I first got the monitor, it would have an issue where if it went to sleep, uh, it would not wake up or it would appear to not wake up. What it was actually doing was like a 99.9% .9 darkness. If I had something really bright white on one of my other monitors, I could drag it in there and see it would barely show up. And um, only toggling the refresh rate uh, inside of the OS on that monitor would fix it. Um, I still have that issue after the latest firmware only when I'm using dynamic contrast, which um, I love to use that. It kind of gives the HDR feel without the whitewashing. But if you let the monitor go to sleep with dynamic contrast on, it will not wake up unless you toggle in the OS the on or off or restart the system. So that's really a nuisance. Um, and additionally, 240 hertz is what sold this monitor for many people. And it's disappointing to me. I wanted to use multiple monitors with this. I have 227 inches above my screen. If I actually come in here and enable 240 hertz, so you can see it's at 120. Um, if I enable 240 hertz here, if, just, if I have any additional screens on, everything goes black. I don't know if that's a limitation of NVIDIA drivers, of DSC, uh, compression not functioning. I mean, if I'm using just an HDMI as my secondary or if I'm using a display port, Everything goes black 
uh, and then eventually my other monitors will wake up and the, this, this monitor just stays black. I've seen other people post online that they were temporarily successfully able to run all monitors while having that 240 and then just after that it dies. Now I've even gone as far as uh, lowering the resolution and refresh rate on both of my secondary monitors to see if that would help. Um, it did not. So I can only really use my screen at 120 hertz. I, again, maybe next gen GPU fixes that, maybe NVIDIA drivers fix that, maybe firmware updates fix that. But uh, the fact that the system is, or sorry, the monitor is not really readily available for purchase anymore because of some quality concerns in the build process that they had. People were getting light leaking out. I don't have any of that. Um, I think that's going to delay some of the support that you'll see with this. So where do I really see this monitor? Do I recommend it? I'm kind of on the fence about that. Like I love the real estate. It is super easy to do work on. I can game on it, especially if I can adjust my games to the aspect ratio, the HDR and the N. It's probably good enough um, short of having something like an OLED. Now it doesn't really give me the warm fuzzies that that Samsung hasn't really announced anything about the manufacturing process. Have things been found? There wasn't really a recall, just manufacturing seemed to halt. They started pulling people's orders, but they alluded to that it would begin sale again, and it just hasn't. Uh, so I'm really beginning to think that Samsung is just trying to sweep this monitor under the rug, hope for, for better next year. I hope that's not the case. I think if it is, I will fail to see some of the firmware fixes I want. I'm not sure again with the 240 hertz if that's firmware or hardware related. I will have an answer to that shortly though when I get my Ampere card, which should see announcement in the next week and a half. Uh, but once the Ampere cards come out, uh, I should be able to push a lot more frames on this, be handle, or handle a lot better ray tracing capabilities, and then uh, maybe be able to do 240 hertz with multi-monitor. Hey guys, it's Chris from Code the Things. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe so you don't miss future videos. I do plan on having some videos on the Ampere announcement that's expected here at the end of the month. Uh, also, when I get uh, Ampere on hand to do some testing and I can compare it with this monitor as well so you can have an understanding of will that help the use case.